Hi, this is Dr. A with another clinical chemistry review video on trace minerals. We're going to look at some essential trace minerals, especially chromium, copper, and iron. So essential trace elements, um, they're considered essential if a deficiency impairs a biochemical or a functional process and replacement of the element then uh, corrects the impairments. Uh, they are often associated with an enzyme, so the part of metal enzymes, or another protein, or the part of metal protein as a cofactor. Uh, excess concentration of essential trace elements are associated with some degree of toxicity, but usually the problem is that you don't have enough. Trace elements are found in milligrams per liter, that are found in milligrams per liter are iron, copper, and zinc. Ultra trace elements that are uh, microgram or less um, per liter of selenium, chromium, and manganese. Chromium, for example, enhances the action of the insulin, so you need it for like glucose metabolism. Copper is involved in many body functions. Manganese is part of metalloenzymes. Selenium works with vitamin E, and zinc has key roles in growth, wound healing, and regulation of hormones. So let's start with chromium. Um, chromium is used um, a lot, so you could get occupational exposure to chromium if you're working with wood treatment, stainless steel welding, chrome plating, anything in the leather tanning industry, and the use of light chromate or strontium chromate paints. Uh, absorption, transporting, and excretion. Uh, chromium is absorbed and then bound to blood, uh, in blood to transferrin and transported also by albumin. The foods that contain chromium are broccoli, string beans, brewer's yeast, liver, and turkey breast. Um, and on the health effects, it is worth noting that there's a difference between chromium-3 or trivalent chromium and chromium-6 or hexavalent chromium. So chromium-3 is essential. It helps maintain the metabolism of glucose, fat, and cholesterol. So you need a part of your diet, which is why it's in food and you do absorb it and it, it is carried by transferrin and bombubin. Chromium-6, which you can also absorb, it would also be transfer, you know, transferred in the blood via transferrin and albumin, is toxic and it's a strong oxidizing agent and can oxidize DNA. With a deficiency of chromium, especially the chromium-3, the one that you need, you can have problems with glucose intolerance, glycosuria, hypercholesterolemia, decreased longevity, decreased sperm counts, and impaired fertility. So you definitely need some. If you have toxicity, it's going to be chromium-6 toxicity um, through exposure of, to chromium-6. Uh, and you would see dermatitis, skin ulcers, and eczema if you have uh, cutaneous contact. So it, so if it contacts your skin. And then you would see airway irritation and obstruction in lung cancer if the chromium-6 is inhaled. Uh, it is analyzed by graphite furnace atomic absorption spectroscopy, neutron activation analysis, and ICPMS or inductively coupled mass, um, inductively coupled plasma mass spectrometry. Sorry, getting my words out of order here. Copper. Copper is soft yet tough with excellent electrical and heat co uh, conducting properties. So it was used a lot in copper wiring, uh, electrical wiring. It is, copper is widely distributed in nature, both in its elemental form and in compounds. It can form alloys with zinc to make brass, with tin to make bronze, and with nickel to make cupronickel, which is widely used in coins. Um, the exposure is usually ingested in food, about 10 milligrams per day. Um, copper is found in oysters, shiitake mushrooms, tofu, sweet potatoes, sesame seeds, cashews, chickpeas, salmon, avocados, and dark chocolate. Um, so you absorb, um, so 50 to 80 percent of what you ingest of your dietary intake is actually absorbed and you excrete it, 50 percent of what you um, intake will be then excreted in feces. Three percent is going to be excreted in urine and sweat. The health effects of copper, it is essential. It is a component of me several metal enzymes. Uh, deficiency of copper, you would see neutropenia and hypochromic anemia, osteoporosis, decreased pegmentation of skin, and general pallor, so all pale. And if you have a toxicity of copper, it's usually seen in Wilson's disease, which um, in which you will see neurologic disorders, liver dysfunction, and Kaiser flasher rings in the cornea, which are these 
copper rings are on the edge of the iris here. It is major, measured by flame AAS, um, by ICPMS, and ICP AES. Iron. Iron is the fourth most abundant element in the Earth's crust and the most abundant transition metal. Uh, absorption, transporting, and excretion. The exposure is you get it in, hopefully ingested in food. Um, it has to be reduced to the ferrous iron for absorption. Uh, foods that contain iron are shellfish, spinach, liver, legumes, red meats, pumpkin seeds, quinoa, turkey, broccoli, tofu, dark chocolate, and fish. Absorption, about 10% of your dietary intake is what you will absorb. Um, it is transported by transfer into the bone marrow and incorporated into hemoglobin to make red cells. Um, incidentally, uh, cast iron, if you cook in cast iron, you can increase a little bit your iron intake. So if you have iron deficiency, you will have iron deficiency anemia. And if there's toxicity, uh, you will see hemochromatosis in which you have tissue accumulation of iron, especially in the liver, which can cause liver dysfunction and a hyperpigmentation of the skin. So uh, incidentally, uh, iron deficiency anemia is seen more often in females, especially menstruating females, and the toxicity or the hemochromatosis is seen more often in males. The uh, health effects, of course, is essential. It is a component of hemoglobin and myoglobin, so we need it. Um, disorders of iron metabolism are generally evaluated by uh, looking at a CBC and looking at pack cell volumes, hemoglobin, red cell counts, and all the indices, MCH, MCHC, and all of that. Your total iron and TIBC, the percent saturation, the transferrin, and the ferritin. Those are all the tests that you would use to evaluate you know, make a difference if they are deficient or toxic with, uh, uh, in regards to iron. And that is the first three. Thank you so much.